Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, everyone. My name is Nate, and welcome back to another weather forecast discussion. This time, it is for June 6, 2022. Now, what if I told you that hurricane season started yesterday? You probably wouldn't believe me, right? Well, it's true. And right on cue, we have a system to talk about that could impact the United States. So without further ado, let's get straight into it with potential tropical cyclone one. This is our first one of the year, of course. And uh, this one is expected by the National Hurricane Center to become a tropical depression. So an organized storm here within the next 24 hours. And then even after that, a tropical storm here as this continues to progress towards the portions of the Florida Peninsula. So basically areas from Tampa and Melbourne in Florida and south, they all need to watch out. A storm surge could be an issue here along the southern portions of the peninsula from the Keys all the way up towards Fort Myers, even portions of Miami and uh, Palm Beach could potentially get some activity here, especially with how, if you guys remember how a tropical cyclone spins, it spins counterclockwise, all right? And so when it has these bands, when it brings those winds here from the southern side and it curls it up into the southern portion of the forecast cone, which is uh, not an exact area as to where it's going to go, you know, the landfall could be anywhere within this forecast cone. But regardless as to where it makes landfall, the southern side of it will be bringing in a lot of showers and thunderstorms and a lot of strong damaging winds into the southern portions of the Florida Peninsula, which could spark flash flooding, as well as some strong damaging winds and the threat for a few tornadoes, which is possible. Now, I want to go over here to the satellite imagery here real quickly, and you guys can see as this is zoomed over potential tropical cyclone one, that it's pretty messy right now, all right? A lot of the stuff that you would think would be a part of the tropical cyclone is all the way over here, south of Cuba. But in fact, if you take a look at these lower level clouds here, you can see how the general flow is somewhere over here on the northern portions of the Yucatan Peninsula. And that is where we're watching for our circulation to start to develop a little bit more. Now, if we go ahead and take a look at the water vapor imagery here, just basically zooming out as to what the general flow of the atmosphere actually is. You can see here is our tropical cyclone. You can see the anticyclonic flow here on the outskirts of the system. And the only issue here is that you can see this flow is a lot stronger than this flow. And that's actually because there is a pretty strong high pressure system over here into portions of the Caribbean. And this is creating a lot of clockwise flow here. So a lot of wind shear here connecting from the Yucatan all the way over into the portions of the Bahamas and southern portions of Florida, which is basically going to shear off a lot of these showers and thunderstorms. And that's going to be the issue here as to whether or not this, you know, tropical system can form within this significant wind shear. Because basically what happens is that if there is no wind shear in a perfect environment to where this system is allowed to form on its own, it'll allow itself to congeal into that counterclockwise flow. It'll be able to, circ you know, to circulate naturally. However, when you have wind shear up above it, where it's actually starting to displace some of the winds, it's actually forcing the circulation apart. It's stronger in one spot than another, and it's becoming unstable, more or less. The circulation is not balanced whatsoever. And so whether or not that would be able to survive through this significant wind shear is going to be the main, you know, issue here. And to illustrate as to how much wind shear we actually have here right now, we actually have our wind shear map right now, you know, on your screen. You can see all the clouds here on the side. Remember, our circulation is right here at the northern portion of the Yucatan Peninsula. And you can see all these red lines here are indicative of some very significant wind shear. And all the green lines is very low wind shear, very favorable wind shear for tropical cyclones to develop. And you notice how you have a lot of those showers and thunderstorms that are forming in these greens and yellows, which is neutral wind shear. It's good enough for something. But if it's all in the red, then immediately those clouds start to be displaced. It's starting to get further and further away from the center of the circulation. And that's kind of not good for tropical systems because you want those thunderstorms to be in the central portion of the storm so that it could obviously intensify further and further. So that's going to be the main cause for concern here. Once again, you can see the general flow as to how this wind shear moves on through. We have a little bit of a weaker trough, but the reason why I say the high pressure system kind of overtakes all of this is because you can see how we're in a little bit of a ridge here into portions of the Caribbean. You can see this general looping as to how it goes over and forms 
in a clockwise pattern. And that's kind of what we got here. We kind of have this upper level high pressure system that's sitting over the Caribbean at this time. So whether or not this low pressure system can take advantage of the low wind shear, uh, we'll have to see. But for right now, it is definitely fighting for its life for the most part in trying to develop more or less. Now, the interesting thing here that I want to point out is that aircraft reconnaissance actually has been sent in to investigate the system. It actually occurred sometime around 6 o'clock Eastern. They actually got done here at 6 actually, but you can see the general pathway that they took as they flew into these thunderstorms. And what's happening here is they kind of found an elongated area of low pressure. It's not centralized into one specific spot to where it's completely circular. It instead is elongated right within this area right here. And you can tell based off the clouds that that is exactly the case and how it swirls off into this general area right within here. And that's just kind of what we're dealing with here at the moment. It's a very elongated area of low pressure. Uh, the eastern side, ironically, is actually the more organized side, as you can tell with the more scattered showers and thunderstorms that are over here. But the clearer side on the western side is the more disorganized side of this system. And that's the reason why right now it's not an organized tropical system or tropical storm. Now, if we take a look at the Euro model here with the cyclonic vorticity indicated in all of the yellow and orange and red, and then all the wind barbs indicating the wind shear here at 500 millibars, which is about the upper level wind shear more or less, you can see the general flow right here of our high pressure system. This is how uh, we can tell that our high pressure system is over here because we have a lot of clockwise flow right within this area. And of course, low pressure systems spin the opposite way. So right over here is where our low pressure system is. Now you can see we have a lot of very strong wind shear right within this area, similar to what the other model said in the description of where our unfavorable wind shear is. Now, believe it or not, because of this very strong wind shear, I actually have a, uh, a gut feeling more or less just based off of what I see with the models that the landfall will actually just be a little bit sooner than what the National Hurricane Center says. You can see right within that area, the actual landfall is potentially around 1 p.m. Saturday, right around that general area. And I do believe personally that it will be just a little bit sooner than that, probably in towards the late stages of the morning. So if you live along the coastline over there, uh, expect in the morning, probably the early morning to the late morning and early afternoon as to when your maximum uh, amount of activity is going to be with your flash flooding, your strong damaging winds, and your threat for tornadoes. But uh, that's just personally my opinion. Please be sure to, you know, stay up to date with the National Hurricane Center as they are, you know, they're the actual professionals here. But just based off of what I'm seeing with the models, I do believe that it is going to be a little bit sooner than what the National Hurricane Center says. Now, if we progress a little bit further to the actual precipitation, you can see how this actually kind of congeals a little bit more. We have a lot of our precipitation on the eastern side of the storm. And once again, that's because of our very strong wind shear. As I described earlier, the wind shear basically pushes the thunderstorms away from the center area of low pressure. And that's kind of what we got here. We got a lot of these thunderstorms that are going to be pushed over towards the eastern side. Now, what this can cause is a little bit of an issue here, especially for southern portions of Florida. Of course, rainfall is going to be an issue. As you can see, we have an elongated area here of significant rain and upwards of five to six, maybe even seven inches possible across some of these areas. So if you know anyone who lives within those areas, I highly recommend seeking higher ground during this point. Uh, the strong damaging winds are not going to be as much of a threat if we actually go ahead and take a look at our wind gusts here. You can see that if we go back in time just a little teeny bit, you can see that the wind gusts along the coastline gets an upwards of 40 miles per hour. And that's not really too high for the most part, especially since that's supposed to be your sustained winds here as a tropical storm. So just something to make a note of is that the uh, wind is going to be uh, relatively strong at the surface for a, uh, you know, just a little tropical system at this point of the season but it's gonna be more of a rain threat, all right? If you take a look, once again, a lot of rain within this area, so something to be mindful as this continues to move on through. But the real issue here is going to be how this wind shear all comes together, because we have our 850 millibar wind shear, which is about three kilometers above ground level, so our low level jet, more or less, and we have a lot of very strong wind shear coming here from the eastern portion of the storm. You can see this is our low pressure system right within there. And you can see how all of it's being congealed over on the eastern side. So we have a lot of wind shear coming from the south in this instance. And then if we go over here 
to the 500 millibar wind shear, you can see that that wind shear actually turns with height over into the extreme southern portions of Florida. So the Keys, basically Miami all the way up in towards portions of Palm Beach and even towards the Everglades and areas near Fort Myers, they could all be getting in this action here as this continues to move on through due to the fact that we do have some very strong wind shear here in the upper levels that is going to be veering with height. So I do believe that a, you know, a system with tornadic potential is possible here, especially if you're from Lake Okeechobee in South. That is where I personally feel like there could be some tornadic potential. Probably if you had to ask me as to what probability the uh, National Hurricane Center and the Storm Prediction Center could issue for tornadoes, probably be a 5%, and there could definitely be a tornado watch issued for, I'd say, Friday night into Saturday afternoon. So something along the range of that area could potentially see some activity. And if we take a look at the vorticity here, real quickly, you can see how a lot of vorticity is over much of Florida here, well before the system actually makes landfall. Right there is the center of the tropical system right there. And if we go back in time just a little bit, you can see that there still is a lot of vorticity. You can also see the bands of the system now starting to come into view. And these thunderstorms are going to be the issue that could potentially create your tornadoes. Now, along the coast, along the coast, that's going to be the highest area of concern for me because the uh, water spouts could be forming off of the coast. That typically is, once again, where there is less friction and more favorable conditions for water spouts to form, which is on the water. And those water spouts can move ashore and become tornadoes. So that is going to be the thing to watch out for. Uh, I'm not expecting them to be super significant across the board, but I am anticipating a lot of tornadic thunderstorms to potentially play a role here as this continues to move on through. So definitely something to watch out for if you're over here in the southern portions of Florida. And uh, this is expected to continue to move on through out of your area by sometime around, I would say, Sunday morning to where it will finally go out to sea. Now, I want to go back out here just to show you as to where this all goes more or less with the Euro model. You can see how the tropical system ends up going through Florida and now is almost paralleling the East Coast. It'll actually then make a turn a little bit to the right here to where it will actually head off towards the general area of Bermuda. So Bermuda should probably watch out for this by the beginning of next week. But other than that, not expecting too much from that system to impact the United States besides some uh, maybe some localized storm surge that could be possible over there. And last but not least, let's just cover the entire United States over the next three days just to kind of give you all a general idea as to what could potentially happen. And of course, the time is above me in Eastern and you can see that you know, throughout this evening, we're going to have a lot of showers and thunderstorms across much of the United States, including portions of the South Central uh, Plains over here into portions of Oklahoma and Texas. So if you guys are over there, definitely would watch out for that. But as this continues to progress further and further into Friday afternoon and Friday evening, a lot of showers and thunderstorms over here along the coastal Carolinas and southern portions of Florida already starts to get that activity. So I'd watch out for that. And of course, a lot of scattered showers and thunderstorms over here across portions of the Pacific Northwest all the way into the Rocky Mountains areas and then finally into the Western Plains as well. So I would definitely watch out for that as this continues to move on through. Not expecting too much with these storms besides some very large hail over into portions of the Southern Plains over into Texas specifically. And then... It's just maybe some strong damaging winds, maybe a tornado or two is possible. Now, I mean, you can just see how this continues to go ham off into southern portions of Florida. It continues with a lot of the rain over into much of that area. A lot of scattered showers and thunderstorms continue to move on through. We do have a bit of a band that starts to move on through a new uh, setup, more or less, a new system that is expected to move on through into portions of the Midwest into the Northern Plains, more or less kind of the upper Midwest, more or less with this as this continues to move on through. And that is expected to create some strong damaging winds in my honest opinion. So I would watch out for that too, uh, specifically if you are in Southeastern portions of South Dakota, Southern Minnesota, much of Iowa, uh, central to Eastern Nebraska, as well as into portions of Kansas, Missouri, Wisconsin, and into portions of Illinois. But other than that, the main threat is going to be this system down here in the southeast. I am going to be live streaming the landfall of the system as well as the lead up to it with all the tropical you know, development and 
the actual tornadic development with this system so please be sure to stay tuned and one thing that i will say i will have a video tomorrow night i will have a video tomorrow night discussing as to what the updates are with the system as this continues to move on through so please be sure to turn on notifications if you haven't already as i will be documenting this storm all the way through as this impacts florida so thank you guys so much for watching if you did enjoy the video please be sure to leave a like subscribe if you're new turn on notifications share this with friends and family and on social media also follow me on social media link will be in the description down below and i will catch you guys tomorrow night so peace out everyone